Alrighty, I <clears throat> apologize for being a few minutes late and for <clears throat> having reactions that will be a little late. I did go to the dentist yesterday. They about killed me. And uh, they, they shot me over and over with, you know, anesthesia and still couldn't kill it. And so as per my usual deal, I just quit telling them that it was hurting. I said, go ahead, you know. <clears throat> so uh, I think my body just is like, it feels like it's kind of moving in slow motion because of all the anesthesia. Um, and my jaw is sore. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do the best I can. And I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit because uh, he doesn't depend on my sharpness, <laughs> which, is, which is not there even at, when I'm at my tip top best. So, uh, so um, hopefully we will get something from the Lord tonight. Um, I wanna start tonight's session um, I want to start the session tonight with a math equation. <laughs> oh, I just have to keep dodging that side the best I can. All right, my math equation, and I want to see how well you're comprehending this thing of <clears throat> the Gospels and their emphasis upon the kingdom. And I want to do that by, <clears throat> first of all, looking at the equation that I have on the board. <clears throat> Oneness plus the king equals the kingdom. Oneness plus the king equals the kingdom. All right, that, that was the simple way of putting it, just to add a little more meat on its bones, is to say uh, being one with the king equals the kingdom. Or being one with the king equals the kingdom coming in earth. Is that helping a little bit? Um, we've talked <clears throat> quite a bit about certain aspects and things, but it really doesn't make any difference if we can't see it in the scriptures. If we, if we only hear some man teach, and that some man that I say with sort of a attitude is me. <laughs> Ouch. Is, uh, um, <clears throat> because it doesn't matter which man. All that matters is, is that each of us individually be with the Lord and we be with him by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows him better than we could ever know him, even if we spent, I mean, think about the disciples. They, they spent three and a half years with him day and night. And when it came time for the cross, they didn't get it. Okay, so Jesus made this statement. Uh, I gots to go away. Because <laughs> you fellas ain't getting it. <clears throat> Uh, amazing statement from the best teacher that ever walked the earth. I got to, <laughs> I must go away. I must go away. Why? So that the Holy Spirit will come and teach you me as I want you to know me. Therefore, everything that you've learned up to this point may be learning Jesus, but it is not yet in the category of knowing him as he wants to be known. Now that's important. 
It's, uh, let's put it this way. That's important to him. It's important to him. Well, same thing here. So I decided that tonight we would start with this equation and that we would look at a few scriptures and I would elicit your comments on these scriptures. So if you will, turn with me to Romans um, chapter 6. And I want you to consider this equation, oneness, and of course the word that's understood, I'll write the understood word on the board, it is our oneness. So it's understood that we're speaking of ourselves in this. Our oneness, our oneness plus the king equals the kingdom. The kingdom come, the kingdom come in earth. Okay. Now, before we look at those scriptures, the point of this little exercise <clears throat> is to stop Debbie from making noise back there. No. The point of this exercise is um, to uh, to maybe I don't know. I'm I'm picturing this this little sharp mountain. This you know, and sitting on top of that is our understanding, our lifetime understanding, or the, our Christian lifetime understanding of the Lord. And I'm wanting our little study tonight to sort of nudge that understanding and, and maybe give the Lordship of Christ greater place than just being the boss. You know. Because that's pretty much how most Christians understand him to be. He's, oh, he's Lord. He's the boss. You know. And um, which means that anybody else who's a boss they treat them, you know, in the same category, sort of, except for you go, well, he's not just Lord, he's a king, so we have to treat him with respect, you know. <clears throat> I've been drinking like a madman the last few days. <clears throat> All right, Romans chapter 6, verse 11. <clears throat> now let's look at it. Let's think about it in light of this. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. Okay, just, just right there is a good little start. <clears throat> because that's giving you a clue as to where we're going with this. If the negative side is death, then what's the positive side going to be? <clears throat> it's going to be life. Okay. And a lot of times we don't, we don't balance these things out. We don't weigh them out and see that, okay, well, the contrast of this is going to, this is said this, therefore, it's going to set up a contrast so that we may find Christ through the law of contrast. Through the law of contrast. <clears throat> All right. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, and notice our Lord. Alive unto God through the Lordship of Christ. Anybody find that interesting? Because <clears throat> it could have said, uh, reckon yourself dead unto sin, but free from it by the Lord who takes you by the hand and leads you through the tricky paths of sin because he's Lord. Kind of, does that sort of fit the, the basic picture sometimes we get of the Lord that, well, he's Lord, so I let him be the boss, which means I let him direct me through this uh, minefield of sin and problems, and because he's Lord, he's going to get me through. Is that, can I get sort of a halfway nod? That that, well, that's, 
That's sort of right, you idiot. That, that would even do. <laughs> um, okay, well, there's a scripture there, but it's more than a scripture now. It's a challenge. At least that's what it's supposed to be. It's, it's supposed to be more than a scripture, more than just something we read and go, okay, well, that, that's got to be true even if we don't even understand what it's challenging us on. It's just... I believe the whole book. Well, you don't, you know, you don't know the whole book. <laughs> you know what I mean. So, <clears throat> so this is a, a challenge to us, and it is challenging um, the leadership of how the Lord leads. You see it? Can you see it? It's there. You are reckoning yourself dead, and yet you can't just reckon yourself dead without already having been crucified with Christ, had already been to the cross. Can I get amen? In other words, it's absolutely futile at any juncture to just go, oh, well, then I'm just going to reckon myself dead apart from the cross of Christ. You know, well, well, you know, oh, there's this, there's this challenge, there's this sin, there's this something that's pulling me, you know, and I'm just going to reckon, reckon myself dead. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Because at best at that point, all you've got is what you reckon to be true, <laughs> not the truth from whence it comes. Christ crucified and you crucified with him. There is no, there is nothing to reckon yourself dead without the cross. Okay. There's no, there's no magic that he's given you called the, the magic of reckoning where you can just get in a situation and go, I reckon you, you know, and you talk to yourself and you put magic waffle dust on. I reckon you dead. No, it's still you, and it's still scary. <laughs> Therefore, you can't even do the first part of this without oneness with Christ in his death. Is that right or wrong? You can't achieve that. You can't achieve that. All right, it also tells you another thing. <clears throat> It tells you that just the fact of bringing up, reckoning yourself dead means that just the fact of being dead with Christ, being crucified with Christ, does not just automatically work at any point at any time. That there is to be an agreement and a... And a, and a mindset of oneness in these things. I reckon myself dead through Jesus' death. Okay, so you're coming into agreement. Uh, for example, if the event, if the event happened, you know, way down here, and then you're, you're going along the linear path of your life, somewhere along that path, you're going to meet something that you that you don't like or rather that doesn't like you or something, or you're going to need to be dead, okay. You can just sort of, you know, say, well, Jesus died a long time ago, and so, you know. And what I mean is you don't even really have to call that to mind. You just assume that you're dead because the scriptures say that you were dead. But this is calling for an action at a moment in time long after the actual source. Do you see? You're not bringing it into being as much as you're releasing faith in relationship to it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, the, the, the event, the cross, is what did it. But you are, you are a cross-bearer if I can just say it like that. You're a cross bearer. You are one who 
not only believed something 2,000 years ago, but it is impacting your life today. It's having an impact. And you're helping on that impact by reckoning on what is true because you don't see this thing way down here as an event that happened a long time ago. You see it as God's eternal truth. It's always true. It's always now. It's always real. Is that, you know, because it's not, you, you can reckon on the event and you'll get nowhere. You must reckon on the spiritual reality of it because it is ever present because it's eternal. And it will not change. It will not change. Only we will change. I always say, the Lord's not going to change. The devil's not going to change. So you better not change. <laughs> Stay with the Lord. All right. All right. Well, I sort of walked us through that one, but <clears throat> I'll, I'll just say a few more things here. Likewise, reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Here's the contrast of death life so so it's saying it's saying that you are alive unto God not unto Jesus now that's significant because you are alive unto God by Jesus now in some quarters that's earth shattering what I just said <laughs> Because their whole relationship, their whole prayer life, their whole emphasis is toward Jesus, always toward Jesus instead of Jesus being in them towards the Father. And you, you know, you go through the, like in the epistles, you go through the prayers, and I can't remember, maybe there's one, I don't know, but all the prayers are to God through Jesus. And that, isn't that what Jesus told us to do anyway? He said, when you pray to the Father, Pray in my name. Okay. Um, and when he said that, you just thought, oh, he gave us some magic name. You know, because when I use this name, magic happens. <laughs> you know. But um, it's not magic. He was... He was pointing to the day where we would become one with him. He would be the groom, we would be the bride, and we would take his name, and we would use his name as if it were our name, because it is, because oneness means we're one with Christ. Okay. So, <clears throat> you see the New Testament guys <laughs> He's praying that way, you know. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in that one, Jesus. And then when it comes back out of Christ toward the Father, in fact, I mean, you see it there both. You, you know, uh, it's, it's this ever-flowing movement within the Godhead, ever pointing to the other, ever giving and yet receiving and this flow that goes it's it's like a dynamo and and in that in that we enter in as one with Christ not of our own okay so when we get to this point it is we're alive unto God and we need to remember that we need to remember that this didn't just say, okay, you're dead to sin, and now the, the next step that he would say, which we would, but he didn't, we're dead to sin, and now we are not sinning anymore. See? I mean, that's it. So we were, we're, we're, we were dead, now we were dead in sin, now we're dead to sin, and now the end result is we're not sinning anymore. 
Okay, well, that's fine. I don't, you know, yay, you know, <laughs> that's great. But there's something greater. We're alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Oh, wait a minute. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom coming in earth. That's the full ramifications because the reckoning here is not just to reckon yourself dead, but alive to God, not by salvation, but through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who, and, and that's the wonder of this thing. I, I, I probably should read a, a little bit here. The wonder of it is, is that we have not just gained a new Lord, we have become one. We have become into intimate union, which was not true of other lords before us, that we, other lords that we had previous. It's not true. This is a completely different kind of kingdom. Let me, all right, let me, before I go to the next scripture to look at it, let me just read, excuse me. The thing about having a new Lord is that the relationship with this Lord is different than it was with the old masters. It seemed like I just said something like that. Anyway, we're not just rescued by him, which isn't that kind of, isn't that kind of what we think that the Lord rescued us instead of the Lord married us, and that's the rescue. Wow. Made us one with him. That's the rescue? That's quite a rescue. All right. So we're not just rescued by him, but we are incorporated into him by oneness, and we partake of him. Now, to present yourself as a member is not the same as it was in the old lordships. In the new, all is new. Behold, I make all things new. That's what Jesus said. All right. <clears throat> and we have to get beyond that. This, the, when he says that, he doesn't mean I've, I've changed a lot of things, but there's a lot that I haven't changed. You know, you're still changing. He's made it new. You just now coming, you're in the process of coming to the reality of what is new or Christ, because he is the newness of all this. He's what, he's, he's, when you discover something completely new in this lordship that wasn't in any of the others, it's Christ. And that's brand new because you never had that before. I'm, I'm not assuming you're idiots and you're not getting this. I just feel the necessity of the Holy Spirit at times to try to express that more clearly. <clears throat> All right. Um, now you are one with the very one that you call Lord. All right. Wow, what a statement then. If that's true, you're one with the one you call Lord, then that should automatically start rearranging your viewpoint of when you approach Jesus as Lord. Because you're not just approaching him. The statement I said is, now you're one with the very one you call Lord. You're not approaching as if, well, I'm some sort of a, a slipshod servant that is, you know, flunked out and, you know, needs some help. I'm approaching the one that I'm already one with, and I'm approaching him on that basis, and he's going to respond on that basis. That's how he thinks. That's what he's done at Calvary. That's who he now is. He's one. He's got a body, and he's got a one, and we're that body. And he, he fills his body. All right. So if we don't grasp that, and we're coming to the boss and asking for special helps. You know what I'm saying? Woo. All right. Let's look at another verse here. Romans 7 and verse 25.
Now this is the one where Paul says, the good that I would do, I do not, but the evil I don't want to do, I end up doing. This is Romans 7. Anybody familiar with Romans 7? I mean, anybody intimately familiar? <laughs> anybody journeyed into there? I have. I lived there for a while. Um, so his conclusion in verse 24 is, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death, the body of this death? <clears throat> verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, just stop right there. <clears throat> anybody, does anybody have a comment on how in that verse, oneness plus the king equals the kingdom. Anybody? I know we don't have our mics out, but I'll try to, if you don't go long, I'll try to repeat for the people that are on Skype. Oh, I didn't even see it there. Okay, well, that means that somebody on this side has to speak. In fact, somebody, <laughs> she's going, <"Whoa." laughs> sorry those on Skype, I'm intimidating the students in the classroom. <laughs> Anybody want to just make a comment on that little um, math thing we have? Yes, Kelly? Yeah, I think you repeat it again. Okay, repeat what? Um, Okay, verse 25, and what we're, what we're trying to find in verse 25 is this math equation. Oneness plus the king equals the kingdom come in earth. All right, so the verse says, verse 25, this is Romans 7, verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now this is the verse in front of it. He just said, O wretched man that I am, who and... He is talking about, you know, wanting to do good and not being able to do it and hating sin and then falling into it and all this mess. But then all of a sudden, it just shoots out this one little phrase, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All right, so how does that, how does that play into this at all? Just a little louder. That's right. Okay. Katniss says we're by that. I'm sorry. That's the nickname. I, I don't even know her by any other name now. <clears throat> um, that that this deliverance is happening through the lordship of Christ. Now, anybody else want to expand on that? What does that mean? Just a little more. Yes. Okay, let me, <clears throat> let me try to put this down. I, you're following a great line there. And that is, she's taking, the, she's taking verse 24 into context with it. And it says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Okay, the body of this death. So there is, there is, a wretchedness that he finds in himself, okay? A wretchedness that he finds in himself. But he's come, he's, he's come to the place where he's not looking for what will deliver him. He's not looking for 10 easy steps. Do you see what I mean? He's looking for a who. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. He's looking for a who. And he has recognized that this is a body of death. 
that has a grip on him. So, what I think what Kelly was saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that in verse 25, he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, that he recognizes he needs a who. The who he recognizes is the Lord. The Lord he recognizes is one that has a body that is different than the body of death. And therefore, the very next verse says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, in union, in union with him. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so, just to finish it out then. That means that this person, whoever it is, has literally wrestled before they got to this equation they have literally wrestled with their life with their um, things out of control things that they couldn't control things that they wanted you know to be more sanctified I mean that's kind of the way Paul does it in one one angle you know the things that I wouldn't do I, I do and the things that I you know he's just confused and freaked out about the whole thing and <clears throat> Most people, when they get to that place, are looking for God to just reach down his hand, give him a touch, or, or fix something, you know. Or this person, this person at work is driving me crazy. Kill him, you know. Well, no, of course, they, they would never say that, even though they want him gone. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I may need some more of this afterwards. This stuff has made me so thirsty. And I may, I may drink the rest of my life with my head turned slightly to this side. <clears throat> all right. So he's, he's, he's gone through all of this, and he hasn't found the, the equation. He loves God. What did he say? That I have a, I delight in the law of God. This guy loves God. This is no sinner, rank sinner. Who, what rank sinner delights in the law of God? This is somebody that loves God. Well, is there anything any more frustrating than to love the Lord with all your heart and mind, strength, and yet fail him over and over and over? It is crushing when you love him like that. It is crushing to you, and it is, um, and it can really send you to a bad place. It can, it can, you can go into depression. You can really get down. You can quit God. You can, or you become a Pharisee then, you know, and then you're righteous by your own imagination of what you think righteousness is, or. You find the hidden equation. Math saves you. <laughs> yes? Who does? Matt Healy. Okay. Oh, we got a couple comments here. But Matt Healy says the one that sets him free is Christ crucified. The one who sets him free is Christ crucified. And remember now, our lesson, Christ crucified is the Lamb of God. The Lord on the throne, or Lamb on the throne. Okay, remember that. Okay, yes, good. Um, and then Sharon has said that Paul, or in, that, in those verses in Romans 7, that Paul is thanking God for the solution. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then Tony Heather uh, said, in his body he is weak, but in Christ, in his spirit, he is strong. Yeah. Well, and that, that's good. Um, Sharon's saying, you know, he's thanking God for the solution because the solution is a person, but the person is the Lord, but the Lord is the king, and the king brings the kingdom into us by oneness. Get it? I mean, you have to see that. I mean, that's that equation, and that's how the kingdom comes in earth. Okay, and then the last one, that you, Heather. Um, Heather. In his body, Paul is weak, but in Christ, in the spirit, he is strong. Okay, <clears throat> because he's not strong, Christ is the strength of his life. Amen? And 
Um, and the, those who cannot stand to be identified as weak and frail and unable to do it will become Pharisees. It's hard sometimes for people. But those who admit their weakness and just say, you know what, oh, wretched man that I am, but I thank God through Jesus Christ my Lord, then you get to see, that, you know, Jesus said, there are some standing here who will see the kingdom come. Well, if the kingdom is, you know, eight, you know, thousand years into the future, whatever, you know, um, how did that happen? Well, it happened because they became one with Christ, the Lord, who is also the Lamb, and they began to manifest his nature. Manifest. Manifest is different than produce his nature. It's a big difference. You can't produce this stuff. Well, let me say this. You can copy it. You know, you can. And, uh, you know, Deb and I, when we were missionaries in Jamaica, we were given a, a parrot. And they had wild parrots all over the island, you know. And his name was Pretty Paul. <clears throat> and we would teach him stuff. I would teach him a lot of stuff, you know. I taught him how to say praise the Lord and, and what else. Anyway, I taught him stuff like that, you know. And so, you know, sometimes we'd have people over our house and we'd be talking to somebody, go praise the Lord. And he'd go, praise the Lord. You know, he'd join right in, you know. And, you know, the question is, did he, was he intimately a part of that? <laughs> Or did he just learn to say those things? Okay, well, I think that you may be pretty, but you're not Paul. <laughs> you're pretty Paul. <laughs> you're not the Apostle Paul. You're pretty Paul if all you're doing is saying it. And, you know, sometimes we say it because we, we, the more you say it, the more you try to lay hold of it. I understand that. I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. But sometimes we just keep saying it because we, it's a cover-up. And, you know, the fastest road to the cross and therefore to the kingdom is just to go ahead and admit it. Be, go to that altar as often as you can and just say, Lord, I'm a mess. I just need you. But always keep that faith in the fact that even though you don't see it manifested in your life, it is just a a step or it's just a faith away you know it's just a small grasp away and only God can bring you to that point so yeah so there has to be trust in him you know you say well I had trust in him and he didn't do it well that's not the kind of trust we're talking about we're not talking about you know I mean who are you the rock of Gibraltar you know <laughs> you last a couple of weeks or a couple of years you know you stay with the Lord because the Lord's worth it. You got another comment up there? I do. I'm sorry. It was from Kelly. The one that I forgot to say. All right. This one's from Kelly. Let's hear it. Um, in that same verse 24 in Romans 7 at the end, he says, Who, of course, who shall deliver me from the body of this dead? And it's almost like he's introspective looking at his own dead body or whatever. And I think that part of the, the equation um, is that he becomes one with Christ in his death. Like this death is his own death, his own wretched death. And you know, like if we're trying to crucify our own flesh or something. But there's a death that we come into union with Christ. It's his death on the cross. And faith and oneness in his death equals the kingdom. Because there's resurrection out of that death. Well, and that's, that's right. That's absolutely right. <clears throat> I mean, when you're in Romans 7, you can become well aware of your dead state. You know, that you're just, you know, you're in a body of death. You just uh, have nothing that's going to get you out of it in yourself. And, th and then there's another death that you have to embrace. People, most, or I, I can't speak for most Christians, most Christians that I know <clears throat> want God to deliver them from that body of death by giving them life. 
not, not, not Christ, just victory really is really the, what they're looking for. And, and this clearly, you know, and you, all you got to do is read chapter 6, 7, and 8, and you'll see the, the progression. It's there. And, and 8 is, as it were, the kingdom. That's when the kingdom of co- has come because oneness was embraced and that oneness is in his death and in his reckon, resurrection because you reckon yourself dead with Christ, through Christ, and you reckon yourself alive unto God. You, but, but again, you do not reckon yourself alive. You reckon yourself alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, through the King who has all, who, who didn't come and keep the laws. He fulfills all things of the kingdom. He's the fulfillment of it. It is in his spirit. It's in his nature. It's in his essence. God just wants Christ in his essence. You know, you're a, you're a candlestick like in the, in the tabernacle, you know. And the candlestick is nothing but an empty vessel. And it, and they pour oil in there, which is the Holy Spirit at work, and then you light that, and that just stays lit, and then now you're the light of the world. But you're not. You're just bearing him who is the light of the world, you know? <clears throat> what time is it? Okay, yes. All right, go for it. Um, so then Matt says um, that, um, so now we can carry about the dying of the Lord Jesus. So now we can, Matt Healy says, so now we can carry about, in our body. carry about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Well, let me just say this, Matt. You are absolutely right. Okay, next one. He says, what we need is another death. And other death. Yeah. The dying of the Lord Jesus. Sharon says, other. what we need is an other death. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. Instead of just another, it is another but it is also very other. Because yeah. one is torment and torture, this body of death, and the other one is life evermore because it's Christ. Yes? Even that response, because I just won't die. Okay, Matt, quit <laughs> responding, okay? <clears throat> All right, let's, let's try to get a, at least one more scripture in here. Romans 8, now, and verse uh, 39. Romans 8, 39, and we're looking for this math equation in here. <clears throat> Romans 8, 39 says, <clears throat> I guess we have to sort of read 38 into it like we should have read uh, 30, 24 into 25 in the last one. Verse 38, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay. Now, don't you, don't you agree that most people read, they stop at that last part, that shall be able to separate us from the love of God, period. But, the, but, you know, the Lord never stops. Paul never stops. The Apostle Paul always... He's always adding in Jesus where we would probably not add in Jesus because we've made it a thing. The thing is we won't be separated from God's love. You will if you're separated from Jesus Christ our Lord. <laughs> you know, but which means much more than he saved you then and God loves you now because he saved you. No, God loves you now because you are accepted in the beloved, yeah, Christ. It's Jesus, Ephesians 1, 6. Now you're accepted, not by the beloved, but in the beloved. And he's beloved, and you are loved because you are him. You're one with him. You're not Jesus. You know what I'm saying. I'm, you know, you're one with him, and he's Jesus, thank God, and he's the, he's the life that fills the branch. We're just the branch and the vessel of it. All right, so... Um, well, I guess we, we just said all of that one, didn't we? 
All right, let's do one more. Uh, Romans 13, verse 14. All right, Romans 13, 14, remember, we're looking for what? The equation on the board, okay. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Okay, notice it says put ye on, and then it says the Lord Jesus Christ. Is, is, let me just ask you this, is this helping anybody at all to begin to sort of see the lordship of Christ in a little different light than just he's the boss, you know? All right, anybody want to comment on this before I say anything? It pretty much says it. <laughs> you, could just, you could just read it. Uh, Romans 13, 14. Okay, what are they saying? Oh. <laughs> Is that coming from you or one of the Scottish? I feel it. <laughs> Do me a favor. Sit down. <laughs> cooperation and, I, and I'm sure Tony's getting that from the fact that he's saying put ye on this is similar to the first one we looked at you're right Tony okay somebody else yes Jim uh, putting on only way to do that is because we are on. and that's that's exactly right we put on what is already true of us and that that means faith and and when I say faith I'm not talking about your general generic you know, faith that people talk about. I'm talking about a faith that grabs or grasps or holds on to oneness the way a branch would hold on to a vine if somebody was trying to break it loose. You know, it just, you know, I don't know, just, just to hold on to what, is, what he says is true of us instead of what we at that moment are going through and thinking is true of us. You have to... That's the kind of faith. That's the faith of the Son of God who loved us. Okay, you got any up there, Kelly? I was just kidding. You can stand up. <laughs> the provision has been fully given, put him on. The pro there you go. We've been saying that. But the provision has been fully given, put him on. Sharon said that. Okay, what else you got? Okay, Tony Heather, a father who loves and knows what we need, which is him. A father who loves is that what you said who loves us and knows what that what we really need is him the father who loves us and knows what we really need is him and boy isn't that true what a good father because he's not going to get distracted all right well let me just let me just say it here i mean put you on the lord jesus christ that's the king okay there's the king. Remember, we're talking about this equation. I keep trying to get you to just go, well, what that means is here it says put ye on the Lord. That's the king. The put ye on is oneness, and that results in, because it says that um, you're not making provision for the flesh, but the kingdom comes through you by Christ, through the king. So anyway, that's that. Now that you got it, we're going to quit. All right, let's take a little break and we'll come back shortly. <laughs> 